In today's video, I will show you a new feature that simplifies management of FSLogix configurations uh, that is called FSLogix configuration profiles. Let's start out by going to settings and the integrations page. And we'll notice that we now have several additional options in the FSLogix profiles tile that you can see here on the right side. Uh, now, this feature is available in Nerdio uh, for a uh, Nerdio Manager for Enterprise version 3.0 and newer. And previously, what you had in this tile was just a path uh, for FSLogix storage, as well as some of the um, registry settings that you could specify. And then that would apply by default to all of the newly created host tools. In this version and all subsequent versions, there is now the concept of an FSLogix configuration profile. So let's take a look at what it is to add an FSLogix configuration profile. So we'll click the Add button uh, over there, and then we'll be able to give this profile a name. So let's go ahead and call it FSLogix Profile 2. Then we have the option to enable Cloud Cache, and Cloud Cache is something we will cover in uh, a subsequent video, so we're not going to get into details into Cloud Cache right now. And then we have to specify or select a path to the FSLogix storage. Now, what's really nice is this is now a drop-down box that will look inside of all of the linked Azure subscriptions for any domain joined Azure file shares or any Azure NetApp file volumes that are SMB integrated with Active Directory. And it will allow you to select one or more of these shares to be used as the path. So let's go ahead and select this share and maybe select this share. And then we can even type in a path manually. So maybe you're using a file server or for whatever reason, your file share isn't visible, you can go ahead and type in, you know, server 01, share 02, um, you know, folder and press enter. And now you can see we have three paths specified and you can even reorder them by dragging them around. So for instance, if I wanted this to be my primary path, I could go ahead and move it up like this. We can then specify any necessary FSLogix registry options, just as in the past. Um, these would be things that uh, would optimize the FSLogix configuration for any sort of given scenario that you need. And the concept behind having multiple profile paths is with non-cloud cache configuration with what's known as VHD locations, FSLogix will, will look for the profile VHD file in each of these paths in order. So it will look in the first one. If it finds it, then it will connect to it. If not, it will move on to the second one. If it finds it, connect to it. If not, move on, etc. And if it doesn't find it in any of the linked or any of the listed paths, then it will go ahead and create the VHD file in the first or the primary one that's accessible. So this just provides you with the ability to uh, have some disaster recovery, uh, capabilities where maybe the FSLogix uh, profiles are stored in multiple locations or for load balancing purposes. For our example, let's go ahead and only use one path. So we'll uncheck or we'll remove everything but this premium FSLogix 01 uh, profile or a UNC path, I should say. We're going to click OK. And now you see we have two profiles. We have something called default profile and something called FSLog FSLogix profile two. And we can choose to make FSLogix profile two as our default. Now, if we go and we try to create a new host pool, so let's go ahead and create a new dynamic host pool as an example, FSLogix test 01. Uh, let's call it FSL01. We'll select a random desktop image from the list. We'll leave everything else as is, just so we can create that host pool. And I will show you that it will automatically select that FSLogic profile 02 that we created a few minutes ago. It will make it the default configuration profile, which we can then change um, if needed. 
So let's give this a few more seconds to create all the necessary objects in the Azure portal. It's going to pop up the auto scale configuration page, which we really don't uh, need to configure at this time. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of it. Uh, and then if we go down, we'll see that we have a new, uh, a new uh, host pool called FSLogic Test01. And if we go to the properties page and look under FSLogics, you can see that our default profile is selected. And here is the path that we selected as part of that profile. Now, what you'll notice is you can specify a custom configuration like you could in the past, or you can explicitly select a specific profile. You select a specific profile, even if the default profile changes later, it's going to retain the setting. However, if you select the default, then depending on which profile you will set as default will be the one that's going to be used in all of the configurations. Obviously, we can make these changes here and we can apply to existing hosts or simply save the settings and allow these settings to apply the next time a VM is created or is re-imaged. I hope you found this useful and this new capability of managing FSLogics in different profiles for different host tools pointing in different paths makes your job of managing Azure Virtual Desktop uh, a little bit easier. I will see you in the next video.